confused, don't be. You'll hear it here on MMS and on the iHeartRadio app. If you listen to us from um, parts unknown, well, they're unknown to us, probably not unknown to you. That'd be crazy if you know where you were listening. That would be mm. weird, right? Uh, if you listen to us on iHeartRadio, tell me where you do it, because I like to know if you're outside Ohio. Or, you know, people will go, I'm in the far-flung reaches of Ohio, where you have to listen on the app. That's fine, too. we got people in Toledo and Dayton and everywhere else. Chad's up in Erie, PA. Ray is one of our Canadian bureau chiefs in Vancouver. Joe is in Shelby, North Carolina. Deborah's in Pittsburgh. Jarrett and Tatiana listen, in, provided they're still together. You know, I get some of these couples that go, hey, we both love the show. Jarrett and Tatiana listen in Portland, Oregon. Ray and Brittany listen in Yorktown, Virginia. Provided they're still, Tyler and Julie, Fort Pierce, Florida. What's the state of their relationship? Don't know. None of my business. Speaking of dissolutions, Lauren Boebert has filed for divorce from her husband, they have been married since junior high, right? Weren't they bragging about the fact that they were started having kids when they were 10 or something? And uh, Lauren and uh, Bobert, of course, she's speaking of Colorado. Everybody knows who Lauren Bobert is. They have four sons. They've been married uh, almost 20 years. And uh, she filed for divorce. So who knows? If I can go so far as to speculate what happened... Words will always give you away, and part of her statement says that I've always been faithful in my marriage, and I believe strongly in marriage, which makes this announcement that much more difficult. That tells me that he was not, because here's what probably happened, right? Once Lauren Boebert starts to get uh, some national attention for being a cuckoo, the husband, you know, runs into some other people, and somebody goes, you need somebody who understands you, honey. You need. You can't be, I mean, come on. So, uh, again, pure speculation and conjecture, but I would be surprised if the information isn't that her husband was off doing something else. While she was fighting to represent the people of Colorado's 3rd Congressional District. Irreconcilable differences. A 46-page divorce petition. How about that, boy? Weird thing is, the last page of the divorce petition all rejected Colorado vanity plates. <laughs> they have four sons, the oldest of whom is 17, and is going to be a dad next April. This was the big thing, right? She's all happy that her teenage sons uh, don't use condoms. Loves it because that will make her a 36-year-old grandmother just as her own mom was. Isn't it wild what people put value on? Uh, she was working at Burger King when she was 16 and met her future husband and fell in love. Her pants were as aflame as the Burger King grill. You'd assume four months after we met, Jason and I went off to get married. Because of course you did. Didn't you say Burger King was going out of business? Maybe they should well, they're closing the a lot of restaurants. They're not going out of business, but they're closing a lot of restaurants. Somebody was telling me when I mentioned that, because Burger King said they're going to, and I love Burger King. People said that, um, I guess one guy had the lion's share of the franchises in Northeast Ohio, and those all kind of fell out, which is why it's increasingly difficult to find a Burger King in business. But they're still around. But when she was 16, that's where she was working. Pretty common trajectory for American teens, right? You work in fast food. And she liked to do everything else fast. Um, they got turned away in Las Vegas because uh, she was too young. And she pointed out there was no shotgun wedding. McDonald's offered me a shift manager position that paid more than $40,000 a year, and I was just a teenager, she said. The choice between a high school and a high-paying job that would put food on the table was an easy... This is all from her book. She wrote a book. These people get famous. Nobody's ever heard of them before. They get a little bit of a national attention. and that, I mean, they don't write the book. They, you know, dictate a bunch of stories. And then a person who knows how to construct a book will put the stories together. Ooh, give me one of those. <laughs> I have good stories. 
But you're not a paperwork guy. I, I don't that's know. That's what I'm saying. I, yeah, I tell people how to write. All yeah. these know, books are ghost written, yeah. right? They take the person's stories, like Kramer in the pants, mm-hmm. Jay Peterman's stories. These people all have well, other people. Well, that's different. That's, those were those were Kramer's, Kramer's stories. stories. But that's not, like, I, I want to tell my stories. I just don't want to do the tippy types. <laughs> you, that's not for you. Yeah, I only, the, the, I only type it. But who, listen, you can write. I'm, who's yeah. the who's going to be able to I'll just do better regale people, huh? Well, I'll tell them the story. I I don't need someone to like. You want a typist? Well, I want, yes, exactly. That's you what don't I want mean. a ghost. I do voice voice. Just text. someone doing a typist. <laughs> yeah, being a typist. Her husband, of course. Uh, people love to point out people who don't like Lauren Boebert at all. Uh, love to point out that her husband um, flashed some kids at a bowling alley. And this wasn't when they were kids. This was back in 04. Lewd exposure. And her defense was he never displayed his genitals. He only acted like he was going to unzip his pants, which I guess to her was a, was a defense. Mm. He only pretended that he was going to show two girls at a bowling alley his junk. Uh, so anyway, so who knows? Listen. 20 years is a long time to be married. Long time. Uh, But what are you going to do? She's attacked relentlessly by the left, she says, of course. Because, all for no reason, she's a fine, upstanding woman. But she and her husband are getting divorced. Listen, divorce sucks. You know, I'm sure there are going to be all kinds of people who don't like her who are going to be like, ha, ha. But it sucks. You'll never meet a person who's getting divorced who say that they ever, ever want to get married again. I swore till I was blue in the face I'd never get married again. Did you? You know what, Bill? See me after the show, will you? I got things to do, got bud. Something you to tell, tell you. me now. I've got something to tell you. <laughs> you should marry that blonde lady that hangs out with us sometimes. Who's that? That blonde one that sits in Mary's spot sometimes. Gap Cruz? No, My wife? Yes, Gab Cruz. <laughs> Gab Cruz. No, we do have a thing for blondes, don't we? On this uh, show? <laughs> well, what do you want? There's a lot of women out there. Uh, blonde. Hmm. Mary will need to get on some Wagovi so she can eat pizza er day. Yeah, how about that? So Wagovi. Ah, it's one of them uh, lose weight fast shots. Oh, yeah, baby. Yep. I'm in. Get your semi glutides and pepperoni. Wagovi me. Yeah. I'll do, I'll do ads for it. Alan and Grandma pizza is typically thin rectangle with the cheese placed before the tomato sauce, baked in a sheet pan and cut into a small square. Hmm. Okay, well, there you go. They're going to offer you around the corner here uh, all kinds of uh, uh, different options for you. Anytime you uh, want to leave voicemails for us, too, if you don't have access to the app. Or, listen, on the rare occasion, it's just not working for you. You can always leave us voicemails on the after hours line. It is a 216-986-8903. Alan, Trucker John, love the show. Went to Mackinac Island for the weekend. What a great time. I recommend it. I've seen, uh, I was watching some of the old uh, clips. Pound Cake looks so bored. Does he uh, <laughs> look like that all the time, or is that just uh, one and done? Huh. All right. Well, he, he thinks you look bored, Cody. Um, you're just sitting there, right? I was gonna say. I mean, it, it depends. I'm not bored doing this show, but I'm. It's. Got, I'm gonna look bored, not doing anything. I'm sitting here. Right. <laughs> what, what he has resting do? bored face. Like I. I if you're listening to other people, you're not gonna look excited. I mean. I, I mean, yeah. Tell you what. Do me a favor, just to get this guy off my back. Could you look excited when I'm talking? <laughs> So anyway, so the uh, blah, 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 and the, uh, hey, Lauren Boebert's husband's a convicted sex offender. <laughs> maybe, maybe don't smile <laughs> for that, that part. Big. <laughs> That's going to be a bad yeah. screen grab for you. That's going to be a really, really bad. Hmm. He should have put an onion ring on it. Okay, I get it, because they were working at Burger King together, and I understand that. That's good. That is good. But imagine they go to a girl who's 16 and they go, you'd make a great shift manager and we're going to pay you $40,000 a year. There's no teenager that wouldn't take that, if that's a true story. 
There's no teenager that wouldn't take that if you, uh, she, apparently her parents weren't putting food on the table. Well, her mom was a 36-year-old grandmother. It's really hard to kind of get things going under those circumstances. So uh, uh, Lore Bobes had to go out and uh, make the money out there. I know it'll make you feel better. You want some sweet nothings? Oh, we haven't had one of these in a minute. It's time for Sweet Nothings with Jenna from Poland. It's a great day to kick somebody's ass. This has been Sweet Nothings with Jenna from Poland. Hmm. All right. I was getting out there and kick somebody's ass. It's always a great day to kick somebody's ass. Is it? Yeah. You can always get these hands, no matter what season. Yeah, but when was the last person you He's kicked? He's all about being mean to servants and just <laughs> violence. When was the last time you kicked someone's ass? Oh, God, I haven't gotten into a fight since. I didn't ask a fight. You kicked someone's ass. I kicked somebody's ass. Yeah. Middle school. It's been that long. You're due. But to, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, up a every day, over you. you've done it one time, and yet your motto is any day is a good day to kick some ass? I didn't say it was one time. When was the other time? You said the last time was middle school. Yeah, you were kicking ass a- before middle school? Yes. You were punching kindergartners? What were you doing? I was also a kinder- kindergartner, so yeah. I don't mean little kids on the playground pushing each other down. I mean. Talk about a real fight. Yeah. I was I don't think so. I, had, I had to fight for my rights. I don't think You don't a- fight for your rights. You don't even. <laughs> you're not worried about it. There's no legit ass kicking going on until like you're in high school or junior high. College, I did no no one really fought me in college. Like we had rough housing, we had wrestling, but that wasn't. Well, that's what you're into. You want a little, (laughs) you little rough housing that goes a little uh, sideways. Uh Like, oh wow, (laughs) something fell out. See, and that's exactly why I got to fight for my rights because that's exactly why no one wanted to wrestle me. That's why. It was like they, they, they would like just go down the line to like oh you know they'll fight with this roommate and then fight with this roommate and then they get to me and they're like all right this is I'll wrestle you right now you want to wrestle no I don't want to wrestle wait why would I'll they why wouldn't they score up to you mm-hmm. what what was that what because stopped they, them because they, they thought were, you were gonna mm-hmm. file a civil lawsuit against them no they were why. afraid that they would get aroused because I'm so tempting oh police why did they stop in front of you they stopped I don't know no why I don't know why you, you never asked. Them. I kind of just assumed. I'm like, oh. Why does nobody ever ask questions? Because I didn't care. I was like. You didn't care why a person was going down the line, going to kick everybody's ass, stops at you. <laughs> Th- that created no questions in your mind at all. If I was in line to get my ass kicked, first of all, I don't know what this Again, they violence were receiving line is. What? They were wrestling. Oh, they were grappling and they didn't want to grab it because you were gay. That's what I said. Well, they every, were afraid they were going to get aroused. You think everybody's going to get aroused around you. I didn't know you were being serious. Yeah, no, they would like they were doing like wrestling moves and stuff like that. Why they would were they who think they were going to get aroused because you were gay? <laughs> I don't Guys know. are so They stupid. didn't want to discover something in themselves. Yeah, yeah, they don't want to feel anything a little confusing mm-hmm. maybe. But why would it be confusing? I, we were wrestling and I got a boner. And they didn't know that could happen. They don't want that boner. I mean, when I was wrestling. It's an unwanted boner. When I was wrestling in high school and college, all right? Mm -hmm. Granted, you're wearing protection or whatever, but I never got a boner. Mm -hmm. But if I did, it wouldn't have been like, I wonder if I'm gay. Because you would know. It was just right, and it just made it do that. that What was what? Like the friction. You would blame it on the friction. Blame it on the friction. (laughs) Well, no, no. Again, it's it's covered up, but I mean, it's it's, you're still grappling. You're still two dudes. Do huh? all wrestlers wear cups? I don't know. I was only one wrestler. But the, I mean, we did back in the late eighties, early nineties. Like wrestlers yeah. now don't wear cups. They might not. But you might get a knee in the nuts, and that's the last time you're not going to wear Ooh. protection. Yeah, you got the ear protection. You're going to put stuff on your ears and not in your balls. I mean, it's all you're grappling. You get somebody at a fireman's carry. You got a shoulder in your balls. You don't want that. So they stop to you. They go, I'm not going to wrestle you no one because rough- I might pop a rod, and then what would happen? Everybody make fun of them. I guess. No yeah. one, no one roughhoused with me. That rough was, housed. That was, that was for the bros. I was I was Cody. I was, I was their So friend. the straight guys would only engage in homoerotic activity with other straight guys. Correct. Right. Because they knew, okay. we're bros. We know we're not going to get, we're <laughs> ah. not going to get, you're not going to get rails. And if we do, we know not to tell anybody. Oh. Cody, I'd tell someone. God. And I absolutely would. I'd be like, oh, don't worry. Your secret's safe with me. No, bro. <laughs> you and I are straight. We're going to grapple each other's bodies. <laughs> I'm not wrestling the gay guy. I call this one the reach around. 
<laughs> you and I, oh, I saw what's his name is in the hospital. Uh, the w, uh, classic WWE legend. I don't know these people, but I see these stories. Um, oh, God, he had somebody else's name, and that's why. Oh, Superstar Billy Graham. Do you remember Superstar Billy Graham? Yeah, the preacher. He, no, that was just Billy Graham. Superstar Billy Graham. I don't know this guy. I've never heard of this He's guy. He's like, he looked like Hulk Hogan, but but with no hair. Um, they all look like Hulk Hogan. I guess he died. Oh, he had COVID. I, he might have been, um, he might have been in the hospital, but uh, I think he uh, finally died. Yeah, this is before the era Placed that on I life support. Yeah. Oh, it was? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this I don't, like, I don't, like late seventies, early. Uh, 80s? this is like eighties kind of guy. Um, his real name is Eldridge Wayne Coleman. Boy, I'd go by Superstar Billy Graham too. I'd go by Eldridge. Uh, he got a major infection in his ears and skull. Infection in his skull. Mm. Jeez. So they want to take. Yeah, I know what that is. It's the woke mind virus. <laughs> That's the infection in the soul. That's why Lauren yeah. Bobert's getting divorced. Yeah. Her husband went woke. <laughs> well, he woke up next to the wrong woman and got him in trouble. Guess so. But uh, uh, superstar Billy Graham's wife won't let them take him off uh, support just yet. Got to get that GoFundMe page going first. You got to get that going before you pull the plug. You say it like it's such a scam. You got to get that money. Well, it's not a scam, <laughs> but I mean, check. no, these are people think that wrestlers are rich and they're not, man. I mean, especially from that era. From Don't that area, yeah. Secure the bag. That's right. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know what? So many scumbags set those things up that it sucks for people who are really trying to legit help with medical costs and things. The fact that this is how people pay medical bills now is is p- positively demented. In this country. Why can't they do that? we just go, oh, we don't have any money for these astronomically absurd hospital bills. We'll just set up a GoFundMe. This may be a stupid question. But it's my favorite kind from you. Hey, we were saying you need to ask more questions. Okay, well, it, I mean, if, is there like a loophole? Why do people keep using GoFundMe if there's so many scams? Why don't the person who has, like, the platform say, hey, this is my Venmo account. I need help with my medical bills. Put it in here rather than go to GoFundMe. I mean, Venmo sounds skeevier than GoFundMe. Or any any cash app that you use. I don't use. know. I mean, some people do that. You, uh, uh, do you pay taxes on a GoFundMe? Mary had one. Do you pay taxes on a GoFundMe? I think you pay taxes on everything. No, no. You, I mean, you pay Venmo. There's you where don't. fewer people are using Venmo now because if you use it a lot, you got to start paying taxes now. The whole point of GoFundMe, the reason why GoFundMe takes a portion of the money is to cover their ass for legal stuff. So GoFundMe is technically a charitable donation. So when whenever someone donates to a GoFundMe, it's non-taxable. Okay. But because it's run through a separate business, that's why the company GoFundMe takes a percentage of the money. What what percentage do they take? I don't remember. It's a small amount. It's not a, a very large amount, but they do take a percentage of every donation. Right. Um. So they don't take it just off the top. It's every single donation gets a small percentage taken off of it. Right. And then that goes to whatever Each transaction. They, yeah, is, yeah. The, the Whatever they use it for. But once you get the money, you do not have to pay taxes on it. Because hmm. it's charitable donation or whatever. Where's all that money, Mary? <laughs> I just think it's funny. All, I think it's funny. All Mary's that daddy funny died money. three years ago, yep. and they buried him. What happened to she it? She never said nothing about that money. I took a big old swaller out of it, and I was like, uh-oh. All right. Well, anyway, if you're a fan of that era of wrestling, superstar Billy Graham, who I think is 79 years old, is not in good shape. He said he's dead. Huh? He said he's dead. Oh, yeah? (laughs) Isn't that what you just said? No, no, no. She doesn't want to take him off life support. Oh, okay. I thought you said (laughs) If you're dead, he's not doing well. He's definitely not doing well. Oh, I forgot. Previous contest, but now the one coming up here in the future, will we see that awesome power once again? What type of style will superstar Billy Graham resort to? Number one, I'm going to take seven Diana balls a day, five Della Testerol shots a week, I'm going to be so strong and so powerful. See, that's how different wrestling was. These guys would get on TV and go, here's all the steroids I'm going to take. He was just listing all of the drugs he was going to take uh, to beat the guy that he was going to wrestle. Oh, boy. What would you say, Cody? 
I forgot in college I was in like a huge brawl, but like they didn't know it was me. Like I was just a huge brawl. I was in a party. I was at a party and a fight just broke out. And somehow, some way, I got in it. Like I didn't hit anybody, but I just started put got pushed up against the wall. I'm, I'm fighting my way out. I'm pushing. I'm like ah, and then I jumped off the porch and I got out of the fight. All right. So yeah, that was the last time. Technically, I was in a fight, but I wasn't <laughs> an active participant. I was. Pushed up against the wall. So when my back's up against the wall, you got to swing your way out. Yeah. Yeah, no. You got out. You live to tell the tale. I got those passes for you. Hey, what are you doing for Memorial Day weekend? Want to go to the Berea Rib Cook-Off? Do I ever. Oh, my God. At Mary's Backyard. I'll the be there. parking's free. The kids are free. The mu- All of it. The music. All weekend long. And then ribs, ribs, ribs. And uh, I'll have some passes for you after the break. You want to text for anything else? 35192, and we'll be back. The Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio app and your favorite smart device. Just tell it to play The Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. From the Universal Windows Direct Weather Center, 